ladies and gentlemen, a legend of the Texas Book Festival and Literary Deathmatch. Give it up for Bob Shea! story because I write children's books, but I have the body of a poet. So, <laughs> so I can relate to that. I, I have to get something. Hold on. I, uh, I, write, I write picture books, mostly about dinosaurs, so this is a little different because this story is about unicorns. But, uh, they're similar because neither one ever existed. So, so that's what we're going to do. So we're doing now. So um, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Randy the Unicorn! stunning, beautiful creature to ever walk the earth. Which is why everyone hated him. What? The fish were jealous of his fantastic prancing. Is that why they spit at me? The birds were jealous of his flying. Is that why they put fruit on my horn? Squirrels were jealous of his magic. Is that why they threw garbage at me? That is why they threw garbage at you. Luckily, little kids aren't like fish, squirrels, or birds. They love prancing, flying, and especially magic. If Randy saw a kid in the woods, he always stopped to play. Yay! And for a while, Randy the Lonely Unicorn wasn't very lonely. But at the end of the day, Randy gave the kids a stern warning. You mustn't tell anyone about me. <laughs> Do yourself a favor and keep your mouth shut. <laughs> We both had fun, but it's better if you don't tell anyone about this, okay? But being friends with a unicorn is kind of a big deal. So one by one, they all told. And one by one, they all turned to stone. And again, Randy was alone. He was done with kids for good. Why did they turn to stone? It doesn't matter. Probably a big plot hole, don't you think? Don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> and once again, Randy was alone. Because he asked too many questions. He was done with kids for good. I've had it. Until Elizabeth. Elizabeth was the sweetest, gentlest little girl who ever wandered the woods. <laughs> Every day she would appear in a sunny meadow and dance. But Randy kept his distance. He didn't want the little girl to turn to stone like the others. But, she, but he was very lonely, and she was so very sweet. Yuck. Rewrite that. Yeah. I'm going to work on that. Doesn't get any better. Randy watched Elizabeth for weeks, dancing along with her every move, until the day he thought his heart would burst from his chest. Then finally, Randy stepped from the shadows and danced. And it was lovely. Like no one was watching. <laughs> Randy dreaded saying goodbye. He gave her the sternest warning of all, knowing he may never see her again. Elizabeth said, see you tomorrow. Her, wor her words cut Randy deep. How could he do this to this innocent girl? I don't know. Why couldn't he just stay lonely? I'm weak. So that's it, right? She turns to stone, right? No, no, no. Say no. I hope you cried yourself. I'm not. I'm just kidding. She came back the next day. Oh, and the day after that, and the day after that. Randy and Elizabeth were the best friends ever. They beat up the mean fish together. <laughs> They tied weights on the awful birds together. <laughs> they painted rocks to look like nuts for the nasty squirrels. <laughs> they even put a little unicorn ballerina act together. <laughs> Best of all, Elizabeth knew how to keep her mouth shut. <laughs> because Elizabeth had no one to tell, just an awful twin brother, Albert. Albert lived 
to make Elizabeth miserable. He would bite Elizabeth for no reason, break her toys and burn her books. Worst of all, he ate all the cake. What did her parents do? They gave him more cake. <laughs> Most parents love their kids equally. These two love them alphabetically. <laughs> but starts with A. Albert hasn't been so happy lately. Making Elizabeth miserable hasn't been so easy. No matter what he breaks or how hard he bites, she just doesn't care. One time, just for a second, she may have actually smiled. Drove Albert nuts. He had to find out what was making Elizabeth so happy and kill it. <laughs> so the next day, he, he followed her into the woods, past some black and blue fish, past some exhausted birds, past some toothless squirrels. Then he saw it. He couldn't believe his eyes. It was the most wonderful unicorn ballerina duo he had ever seen. A single tear ran down his cake-smeared face. His hands came together to clap, but instead they rubbed together like an evil person. Sure. He yelled as he leapt through the bushes. He pointed at Randy. They're gonna lock you in a big mean zoo! He pointed at Elizabeth. They're gonna lock you in a room with me! He pointed at both of them, and you will never see each other again. No one won't, please. Begged Randy. I'll do anything. He made it rain cupcakes. <laughs> he did his finest prancing. <laughs> he even taught Albert how to fly. But Albert didn't care. He ran off to tell his delicious secret. <laughs> Which was sort of weird since he had just learned to fly. <laughs> Randy began to cry. It's okay, said Elizabeth. We'll find a way to thank him. In the end, they decided to make Stone Albert the centerpiece of the act. <laughs> That's what you find in your bed if the Keebler elves want to send you a message. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, does it say follow Bob Shea on Twitter in the back of this? Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Shea and the Unicorn! As you expect. I don't know Is there any way to help me move that thing back there? Don't worry about it. Uh, Amelia Gray. It's your time, once again, as we want to hear about Diana's literary work. <laughs>